Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rob's video blog. Uh, I know it's been a while since I have uh, posted, as some of you may or may not know. <clears throat> I uh, tore my ACL and my meniscus playing baseball. So uh, that's what the uh, crutches are here in the background. Uh, not a good thing. I had surgery done uh, about two weeks ago uh, to uh, replace my ACL and repair my meniscus. So I'm going to be on crutches for probably five or six weeks and uh, I'll be going to physical therapy for God knows how long until I get uh, everything back to where it was uh, previously. So um, that's not really what I'm here to talk about. Just wanted to let you know uh, that's the reason why I haven't posted uh, anything recently. My apologies to the nine subscribers that I have now. I think I have nine. I think I had eight and somebody, some random person just recently subscribed. So uh, we're going strong. If you watch the video and you're not subscribed, please hit the little button down below and subscribe to the video so that you can get automatically notified when I do uh, post new videos. Um, and despite what you would think, you'd say, oh, well, Rob, you know, you've been laying on the couch for a week and a half, two weeks. You know, that's perfect opportunity to do a video blog. Well, one, no, I haven't just been laying on the couch the past two weeks. I have been laying on the couch, but uh, I've been actively uh, working from home. And I don't mean working from home, I mean really doing a lot of work from home, so I've been very busy. And uh, two, uh, when you put your leg down and it just swells like a grapefruit, uh, you can't really sit at the computer very long to do a video blog. So uh, that's the reason why uh, only now am I uh, able to uh, to do this. So I'm gonna cover, I'm gonna. I'm going to talk about Deflate Gate now. I don't. I, again, I didn't really want to get into this because I know it's kind of old, um, but I, I just I have to talk about it because it's driving me absolutely insane. And there are two aspects, two groups of people that I, I just cannot handle when it comes to this scandal. The first group is the fans. Okay. Before we even get to that, before we even get to that, let's talk about what. Tom Brady probably did. Now, there was a report that was done by the NFL. They spent all this money and all this crap, and the report didn't really have conclusive evidence. It said Tom Brady probably knew about, uh, you know, the ball boy deflating the ball, and there were some um, innuendos that were sent back and forth uh, between him and the ball boy to let him know, hey, you know, why don't you let a little bit of air out of the ball or whatever. Certainly not proof beyond reasonable doubt. Certainly not proof that would hold up in a court of law. But nonetheless, uh, this is what this report came out. So supposedly, as you know, Tom Brady, um, you know, or uh, the Patriots got caught slightly deflating uh, the footballs. Um, I believe it was during the uh, AFC championship game against the uh, Indianapolis Colts. Um, and they blew him out by like three or four touchdowns, some ridiculous amount of uh, points. Um, and Tom Brady's statistics were actually better in the second half when the balls were reinflated to their proper uh, pressure than, uh, than when they were deflated. But that's neither here nor there. So that's essentially what happened. Uh, the Patriots got caught for uh, deflating the balls, uh, half a PSI, a couple PSIs below what is considered regulation uh, pressure. Now, firstly, if you are shocked if you are a fan and you are, if you're anybody and you are in any way shocked about this, you may be the most naive person on the face of the planet. If you can really sit there and think that an individual who is at the absolute pinnacle of their profession, the best of the best on the planet, who is so single-minded in what they're doing with their lives is Tom Brady to win a Super Bowl. If you can actually sit there and tell me that you don't think that he throughout his career to get to that point was not bending the rules, was not taking advantage of every possible thing that he could, including, apparently in this case, deflating the footballs. If you, if you honestly think that a guy like him, or even all the, pretty much everybody in the NFL, if you think that a person in any profession, not just football, can get to the absolute elite of the elite on the face of the planet without stepping on people, without kind of cheating, without taking advantage of every single possible opportunity and th th that is presented to them, whether it be legal or illegal, um, then you're just kidding yourself. Then you need to reevaluate your, re your entire perspective on how the world works because people don't get to the elite like that without one single-handedly dedicating virtually every single breath and every thought and all their attention on that one single goal and two, by taking advantage of everything at their disposal to get to that point. So 
when I hear these fans that are like, oh, you know, Tom Brady's a, a scumbag, you know, he's a cheater, his, uh, you know, his, um, his legacy is going to be tarnished now and all stuff. To me, it's just like, if you really sat, if you really thought that this guy Tom Brady was this real great, nice guy who never cheated and was of upstanding integrity, especially when it came to playing the game of football, like you're just totally and completely naive. Um, and the idea that like him deflating, having a slightly deflated football is going to tarnish his reputation or his legacy is totally absurd. I mean, Jerry Rice admitted to using illegal stickum. Does that mean that, you know, we take him out of the Hall of Fame and all his catches, uh, you know, don't mean anything? Of course not. Uh, I t Terry Bradshaw admitted to taking steroids when he was on the Steelers. Does that mean that Terry Bradshaw's, you know, Super Bowls and his MVPs um, go out the window? No, of, of course not. It doesn't. Um, you know, I'm not saying that he shouldn't be punished. He cheated, you know, uh, or he, he may have cheated. They don't really have conclusive evidence, but I think everybody kind of gets the feeling that he did cheat. Um, so it should be brought to, brought up. It should be mentioned. He should be punished. Um, and that's the end of the story. But let's be honest about here. The NFL handed down a four-game punishment. That's 25% of the length of his season. Uh, and dollars and cents-wise, based on his contract, that's millions of dollars. To me, for something like under-inflating the football by a half a PSI or one PSI seems totally and completely insane to me. It's not the same as a guy taking steroids and hitting 60 home runs and then not taking steroids and hitting 20. I mean, the, the advantage that he possibly, possibly, and I put in quotations, possibly gained because when the ball was, because the only time that we know that the balls were underinflated was that game against the Colts. And the only statistics that we actually have are the first half and the second half. And he played better in the second half. And I believe a while back ESPN even did their own sort of um, test and their own study. And they said it's, a, it's actually harder to throw a tight spiral with a slightly underinflated ball than it is with an inflated ball. So, I mean, you know, to, to hand down a four game suspension for something that he's suspected of, not even conclusively proven, um, seems a bit heavy handed to me. That seems, seems like a little bit over the top. Um, the other thing that drives me absolutely insane is these former players coming out on TV, on ESPN, on NBC, on all these programs, acting like, oh my God, you know, this is awful. You can't have guys cheating. Tom Brady, you know, uh, he lied, he cheated, he this, he that. I mean, these guys are such unbelievable hypocrites. It's ridiculous. You mean to tell me that none of these guys, you know, wore cleats that were a little bit longer than regulation size, or you know, maybe gave a guy an elbow, you know, uh, you know, to the face or something during the game, or did something illegal, or you know, I mean, like I said, you know, you don't get to be the elite level without bending the rules and taking advantage of absolutely, positively every thing that you possibly can along the way. So these guys are just such huge hypocrites. It, it really blows my mind, and it's like. It's like, the, it's like the politically correct thing to do. It's like when someone says something insensitive about minorities or gays or women or whatever, it's like you, ha you can't just say, yeah, you know what, that, that's, that's kind of off color. You shouldn't have said that. You have to be totally and completely outraged. Otherwise, you're in favor of whatever the heck that they said. Well, these players really should come out and say, listen, you know, we're not really that surprised. There's tons of cheating that goes on, you know, along the edges of the rules. Guys bend the rules a lot. He should be punished for it, but it should be proportional to what it was. But this is the reality of the game. You know, guys are going to do this. They did it in their time. They're doing it now. They will always do it as long as the game is going on. Um, but, you know, when they act like this is some huge thing and, like, they never did and stuff like that, it just, it, it's such a show and it's such, it's such BS. It drives me totally and completely insane. Uh, one of the other things, uh, or I, I guess the last thing that I wanted to mention is, if anything, this is an indictment on the NFL. Because let's be honest, okay, in tennis, in baseball, in basketball, do the teams get to supply the ball in which both teams play with? No, of course not. You know, the umps have all the balls, the referees ha have the basketballs, supply the basketballs in, bas in basketball. The, um, you know, the whatever tennis tournament is running the tennis tournament provides the tennis balls. So why then does Tom Brady before a game or any quarterback before a game get to touch the balls, rub the balls, pick out their favorite ball, and then put it in a bin? I get it that they're supposed to check the pressure and verify and then it goes away, but like that shouldn't even happen. It should be like, listen, here's a crate of balls that were tested, checked to perfection. They come in a locked crate. The, the officials have them on the sidelines. Whoever handles the balls in the sidelines, boom, and that's it. 
You know, the, Tom Brady shouldn't get to scuff up a ball or spit on a ball or squeeze a ball, you know, how he likes and pick his favorite ball before the game. Baseball pitchers don't get to pick their favorite balls. Tennis players don't get to pick their favorite balls. Basketball players don't get to massage the ball and pick their favorite balls before the games. So, so football, you know, so uh, quarterbacks shouldn't be able to do it. But here's where the hypocrisy of the NFL is. You know, they blame Tom Brady for trying to get an advantage to, I don't know, maybe grip the ball better or whatever the perceived advantage that he thought was. The reason why they don't do this is because they want their quarterbacks to feel comfortable with the ball they have, because they want them to be able to throw the ball, because they want to score points, because scoring points is what the fans want to see and puts butts in the seats. So they are just as much at fault here, I feel, as, uh, as Tom Brady is. So uh, that's it for today. Uh, I appreciate you guys uh, having some patience and coming back to the video blog to watch it. I'm going to try and update it uh, a little bit more frequently. But uh, again, if you like it or you don't like it or, uh, you know, just subscribe and uh, you'll be notified when, uh, when a new video hits the, uh, hits the YouTube blogosphere. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.